I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Silly Jedi! Silly Jedi! Remember, the Force will be with you, always. You must unlearn what you have learned. Hey everybody, welcome to Star Wars Car Talk. It's been a while. I know I think I said that in one of the previous episodes, but it has been a while. Once again, it's been a while. Um, actually, the summer came and kind of like took the, the, the wind out of the sails of our very humble podcast here. And of course, you know, with everything going on with the um, pandemic and the virus going around and um, had to take a little pause and I think I also addressed that in one of the previous episodes, but um, we're back. We're back and we're hoping uh, to be back for good. So uh, now that we are, I don't want to say back to normal because that doesn't really sound, it, it, things are not back to normal. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> I think we, we're very hopeful. You know, I think we all want things to kind of get to a place where they were. Um, but I think we should kind of, our, our goal should be to get to a place where we were better than we were before. So I think it's gonna definitely gonna be different moving forward, but I think we should just do our best. Everybody's, it's up to everybody to be better, you know? Um, anyway, so uh, here on Star Wars Car Talk, we like to talk Star Wars while we're in the car. And uh, it's been a while and a lot has happened since our last episode. Um, season seven of Clone Wars came to a amazing conclusion and uh, I was just blown away by it. I think it was an amazing feat. It's just the fact that Disney uh, was given, uh, gave you know uh, Lucasfilm and, and Dave Filoni specifically the task to and the freedom basically to go and complete the Clone Wars series, just so that it can feel complete. And it does. It does. This last season definitely made it feel complete. Um, we got a little taste of what's to come with the Mandalorian, with very with a lot of rumors that uh, you know uh, Rosario Dawson is going to be joining the cast and playing Ahsoka, a live action version of Ahsoka. Now there's rumors that actually just came out um, that she apparently has filmed some scenes for season two, and that uh, these scenes are I. Th- think going to be used in the show because they wouldn't just like film something for nothing um but it is going to be it, it was the, the goal was it, it was to i think have some footage of her for to kind of tease for a trailer that hopefully is coming soon and on top of that we got a date for mandalorian season two and that is october 30th so the day before friday before halloween we will get the Mandalorian season two. And that is super awesome. I'm I'm like so pumped. I'm so pumped about it. Uh, It's really good. It it feels good to be looking forward to something that is Star Wars related and look forward in a positive way. Not look forward kind of like dreading like, oh my gosh, I hope this is good. I hope it turns out okay. You know, like, no, this is season two of the Mandalorian. Without a doubt, it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good season. You know, even even if it's like a hair less exciting than season one, I don't think it's going to matter. I think it's just good storytelling. I think the way they they shoot the the show, I think the 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 fact that the story is so small and self contained, but yet it's starting to expand, especially with the teaser at the end of last season with um, the dark saber and all that. Uh, you know, it, there's just so much room to play in that little corner of the Star Wars universe. And I think it's going to make for some amazing storytelling. And the fact that it doesn't have the pressure of having to be a, you know, a, this big motion picture that's going to be uh, distributed all around the world. And, you know, all this money that is spent on advertising and premieres all over the world and, um, you know, I think the fact that this is like self-contained on Disney Plus, it's it's going to really uh, help. Uh, it's going to help Disney. It's going to help Lucasfilm, and it's going to help kind of uh, kind of. Now I don't want to say like clean up the tarnished image of Star Wars, but I just said it. 
it, 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 it kind of does have to do that. It, the Mandalorian is like one of those things where, you know, back in the dark times when we didn't have any new Star Wars, um, you know, we always had our original trilogy to fall back on. And, you know, and when the prequels came out and people were kind of divided with the prequels, whether they were good or not, whether they liked them or not, you know, the saving grace was always we can always go back and watch the original trilogy. I can always go back and pop in my my Empire Strikes Back and feel warm and fuzzy inside all over again. And it's the same with this. I think regardless of how you feel about the sequel trilogy, and we're going to get to that in a later episode, um, you're going to dig a little deeper into the sequel trilogy. Um, regardless of how you feel about the sequel trilogy, the fact remains that whether you loved it or you hated it, you have to admit that it's it's left uh, kind of like an emptiness. It, it was this big uh, bowl of sugary, you know, dessert that it wasn't even that great, but just because it was there and it was sugary and it was sweet and we're addicted to this sugar, we ate it, we consumed it, and but it left us feeling empty. We didn't get full. It, there were empty calories, basically. The sequel trilogy were just empty calories. There was nothing that nothing that really sustained us. There was nothing hearty about it. So um, I think moving forward, what's good is that we have something that is meaty, that is nice, that is good for us, um, that does challenge our sense of imagination and challenge... Uh, it challenges us in a way that the sequel trilogy doesn't challenge us, didn't challenge us. It, you know, I think the Mandalorian, as simple as it is, uh, it's that simple storytelling, but yet uh, built in like a rich world, you know, um, which I th I just find so ironic that uh, the way that the Mandalorian was shot, you know, on a budget, um, it you know, the, the, cre the, how they had to be creative and they, you know, ex expanded the technology and created these like virtual sets and with the screen, with the infinity screens and <clears throat> all that, I, just that in itself is in the spirit of Star Wars. It's in the spirit of George Lucas pushing technology forward and, 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 try and making, making something great by pushing technology forward, uh, dealing with the limitations that you have and pushing technology forward. I, you know, he did it with the prequels. It's just that we were so focused on, you know, what is this movie gonna be about? What are the stories gonna be about? Is it gonna be what we expected? Is it not gonna be what we expected? But at the end of the day, yeah, maybe the execution of the storytelling wasn't to par with what we had experienced before and I think we re it's because we're as as you know fans of star wars we're hung up on how the original movie made us feel that newness that adventure how the set, uh, empire strikes back challenged us because it was like it really de went deeper into the characters and it was darker and it was different but it also made the star wars universe more richer um and then you know return of the jedi is was like a funny almost like a funny kids movie, but had this like conclusion of Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, you know? Um, we, we yearn for that, but what we forget is that George Lucas, you know, he, um, he was constantly pushing technology. So he, George Lucas at the heart, in his heart of hearts, he was very disappointed with A New Hope. I mean, let's be honest, he was. There's so many things that he wanted to do better. Ironically, it was those limitations that made for a great movie. I think if he had if he had it his way, Star Wars would have been this like over inflated, over budget spectacle, and it would have lost a little bit of what made it charming. Um, that that fairy tale, that charm, that that kind of like rustic used universe that it showed, that it represented. You know, if he had it his way, it, it would have been like watching one of the prequels. It would have been like this crazy, 
you know, so much going on in the background and, you know, all this stuff. Um, so, but with that to say, uh, the Mandalorian uh, taps into the need to create something spectacular, but with limits. Uh, you're limited on the budget. You're limited on time. And I think it helps. I think when you're, when you're limited, you know, um, w with what you have, you are forced to be creative. You know, um, I mean, just to take, you know, with kids, for example, you know, I'm a dad. And I find that when kids are bored, when they say I'm bored, that's a good thing. It's a good thing when they're bored because it means, it means they get, they're going to have to get inventive. They're going to have to use their imagination to not get, not be bored. Um, you know, it's so easy to just sit in front of the TV, grab a tablet, grab a game, you know, but when you're bored, that's when you are the most creative. So when you're limited in what you can do with a movie, with a TV show, that's when you have to get creative so that you can get the story across. Um, and maybe you don't need all the bells and whistles. And, and I, I mean, I just think that's what's working with the Mandalorian on top of the fact that it's a very interesting story. It's a simple story too. It's, it goes back to the kiss, uh, the kiss, the kiss acronym, which is keep it simple, stupid, you know, it, it, it keep it simple. It's a simple story. The loner, you know, it's the loner he encounter and, and he's on a hero's journey with the child. So I, I, I think season two, regardless, is going to be amazing. Even if they, because of the success, you know, Disney decided to throw a little bit extra money to the Mandalorian now that they're not doing movies right now. Um, I still think it's an amazing thing. So it premieres, comes out in October. We still haven't heard anything. What's going on with uh, the Obi-Wan series? Um, last I heard, they're going to start shooting sometime next year. So, you know, it's going to be a while before we get Obi-Wan. Cassie and Endor, I think the same thing. I don't know if they're even... I think they were planning on starting production and shooting uh, late this later this year. And um, But, you know, as of the time of recording, it's September. So it's the first week of September here. So um, we're already in the fourth quarter of the year. And nothing with Andy, Cass uh, Andy and uh, the uh, uh, Cassie and Andor series. And there's a lot more rumors uh, out there as far as what's next for Star Wars. I would love to know what you guys think. Um, so I'm going to start uh, basically just uh, taking questions and answering them during the show. So if you want to send us questions, you can do it uh, three ways. You can email us at JediToyMasters at gmail.com. That's JediToyMasters at gmail.com. Uh, you can uh, hit us up on Instagram at JediToyMasters. Or you can also hit us up at Star Wars Car Talk on Instagram. So all the, both of those Instagram pages uh, are kind of interconnected. You can DM us on there, send us a message on there, a question, and we would love to get them. I, I'd love to get them and answer them here on the show. And you can also email us. So uh, there's three ways you can hit us up. We're also on Twitter. I don't check the Twitter as often, but if you want to hit us up on Twitter at Jedi Toy Master, you could do so as well. I haven't set up the uh, Star Wars Car Talk uh, Twitter yet. Um, so I would love to get questions from you guys. Let me know what you guys think. Are you excited about The Mandalorian Season 2? What do you think Ahsoka's role will be in The Mandalorian Season 2? And uh, what do you think? What's next? Like after, after that, I mean, we know we're getting two more TV shows, Obi-Wan and Cass, Cassie and Andor. Um, there's been rumors about maybe uh, Ben Solo getting a show, maybe getting a limited series. That was, that was a rumor that was kicking around. Um, you know, there's a lot going on. Uh, in the late, uh, next episode, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the sequel trilogy. I'm going to be talking about some, uh, you know, some this kind of disparaging news that came out of the sequel trilogy involving one of the actors in that movie. Uh, what my thoughts are on that. I know by the time that airs, it'll be old news, but it'll be, I'd love to kind of revisit it. And um, so again, thanks for listening. This is going to be uh, it for today. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys are keeping up with all things Star Wars online. I thank you for listening because if you're listening to this, that means you stumbled onto this episode because we we've been off for a while and now we're back. 
So please tell your friends, tell everybody, write a review on iTunes. That will really help us. Uh, that will really help spread the word about this show. Um, I'd love to keep this going. I mean, I love talking about Star Wars, even if I'm talking about Star Wars in the car by myself. So thanks again, everybody. Please follow us on Instagram, Jedi Toy Masters, Star Wars Car Talk. And you can email us also at JediToyMasters at gmail.com. So until next time, guys. Remember, the Force will be with you always.